Hey, what's going on guys? So I thought I'd start this week by doing something kind of fun, something I love doing, uh, something I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I actually have a really big trip coming up. It is, I'll be leaving next month, middle of November, uh, to go do my conference uh, in uh, Chicago. By the way, Chicago 18th, I'll be speaking at a travel conference, FTU University in Chicago uh, all day. So come and check me out if you're not. Uh, I'll put a link below for you guys. Um, but I'll be there. Um, I'll be spending an entire month in November uh, catching up with family and friends. And then I'm off to Europe. So I'll be in Europe uh, December, January, February. So I need to plan that trip. So I wanted to let you guys in on a few tips and tricks and little secrets that I do by actually showing you how I plan a trip that, uh, for that amount of time, how I find my hotels, my houses, my flights, my Airbnbs, different things like that. Um, so this, uh, this video is going to kind of be a little bit all over the place. It's really going to be maybe 20 minutes, uh, 25 minutes of me just running my mouth, just kind of giving you guys a little inside tips here and there. Um, but so bear with me. Um, there's really no format to this. I just want to kind of show you guys a little bit into my world because I get this question a lot. Like, how do I plan these long-term trips? So this is one of like the longer trips that I'm taking. Uh, I've been off the road for about four months now, so it's time to go. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, don't forget, leave the world better than you found it. As usual, ask me questions below if I don't get to it at the end. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey, hey, what's going on? Uh, good to have you guys back. And I wanted to, like I said uh, in the intro to this video, I wanted to kind of do something fun, kind of let you guys in a little bit on how I choose um, where I'm going to go, how I'm planning my trip. So this is going to be for my upcoming trip uh, to Europe. So uh, as I said before, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I talk a lot uh, on Instagram, uh, IG stories that um, I'm flying from uh, Bangkok to Kiev, Kiev for one night. Then I fly over to Berlin for three nights. Then I fly from uh, Berlin, uh, Berlin to Chicago on, and I speak in Chicago on November 18th at the FTU University uh, Conference. And then I fly to Cleveland to visit family, Texas to visit family, and then I'm off to Europe. So I wanted to show you guys how I plan uh, my Europe travels or my travels in general um, for two and a half to three months. So usually what I'll do is I'll start with uh, something basic, a Word document. Um, right here you'll see uh, certain specific things that I have to do. Like, uh, so U.S. to London, uh, London to Dunstable to visit a friend, Romania for Christmas, Berlin for New Year's Eve. Let me go ahead and put a question mark there, and I'll explain that later. Cyprus, Luxembourg, Belarus, Albania options, because those are my last four countries to visit in Europe. And an Andorra ski trip assignment I have, as well as some sellable content. Um, and I'll explain this in a little bit more detail, the sellable content. Basically, what sellable content is, it's um, free. I'm a freelance travel journalist. You guys know that. Uh, so sometimes I'll produce content before I even sell it. And there are some things that always sell. Some photos, some videos, some articles that you can always sell uh, to newspapers or uh, stock image programs. Oh, excuse me, sorry, my um, so uh, something like at Paris during Valentine's Day, that's a that's an article that you can write once a year, every year. Uh, Southern Europe uh, winter uh, breaks, like going to Northern Africa, going to uh, Southern Spain, places like that. Uh, Northern Africa destinations. Uh, Islamic Cordoba is an assignment that I've always wanted to do, uh, exploring the roots of Islam in Cordoba, Spain. So I usually always start here. And then I'll come over here. All right, and you guys, I've already queued up a few of my favorite sites and, and different things uh, for you guys. So I'll almost always start with Skyscanner or Momondo. Now, I use Momondo not too often. I just use Momondo because it's fun. I just kind of like the Momondo interface. So I enjoyed this aspect of Momondo. So I'll go to click here. I'll go to JFK and anywhere. Anywhere. There you go. Just punch in anywhere. Fly out on December 1st. Click search. And it's going to populate a list of flights, uh, countries, places I can go out of uh, New York JFK. And as you guys probably know, Skyscanner has been doing this forever. And pretty much every other site has adopted it from Skyscanner or adopted. So uh, I'll do U.S. out of Skyscanner and click the entire month of December. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm flying out as quickly as I can. So actually, let me go ahead and put a specific day. Let's say the first search out of the U.S. to anywhere. And here, and this is the issue with Momondo. Especially this time of day, it is 3.43 uh, a.m. in the U.S. So these prices are all being pulled up from the U.S. servers. So you're going to get all these check prices. But over here, Skyscanner, you have these prices uh, all saved. Now, granted, these prices are likely going to be different once I click. Now, these are cash. Uh, one of the biggest issues that you have with Skyscanner is a lot of their flights are cash, and it takes a while for those to update. So you will see a price that says uh, one-way ticket $149. Wait, that is a really good price from the United States to Japan. For one way, it's $149. It's a pretty good price. Uh, but the likelihood is that that price is not going to actually be the price. But let's double check it. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see if I'm wrong. Hopefully, I can show you an example of this out of Hawaii. Oh, that's a good price out of Hawaii. That's about right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's about right. But oh, look, the price is going up. But let it transition through everything. Run, let it run, let it run, and yep, see the price is going up 167. And then you go back, it's updated 167. All right, and that's because in the US, this is updated. Uh, granted, a lot of times, if I'm in Asia, uh, it's the same, it's 10 a.m. in Asia, 10 p.m. and back in the US, a lot of times this won't update. All right, so here's my issue uh, I want to get, I need to get to London, so I know exactly where I need to get, I need to get to London. All airports, let's say New York, all airports. Now remember, a lot of people just put in a specific airport that they know, say a JFK. But that doesn't that only searches for flights out of JFK, not New York City. So if you're in a place with multiple airports, make sure like London, for example, and New York are two good examples. Just put in the city name and make sure new is going all airports. London, all airports, like that, all right? And then click search. And do the same thing over here, United States. I need to get to London. Search. And let these two do what they do, do what they do. Chicago is really quick. So I can get a $200 flight out of Chicago. I'm betting that's going to be on United. I think that's a United route. Oh, it's a Wow. Wow Airlines. Don't. Let's see. That's on Wow. Momondo is so slow. Oh, so slow sometimes. But that's not a bad flight. And by the way, like Wow Airlines is a dope airline. Um, and as you can see, it's not a direct flight. It's connected in Iceland, Keflavik, where they they're based. But two hundred. That's not bad, especially when an alternative for a direct flight is that much. You know, right? So I'm looking at that. Oh, look at the guys. This is unusual. That, that's actually, let me refresh this. It's actually quite rare for it to take that long. Ah, uh, there we go. See, must have been something on my end. Oh, there we go. It's not that bad. So we had a $150 flight on Norwegian. Now, something you guys have to remember about Norwegian, which I wish more sites would show, is that you have to pay for a bag. So this price, $150, is without a bag. So the upgrade, I know, is around $45. So this is going to be about $195. $195. And so take this price and add all right, to get to London. Not to mention my flight from Texas um, and to Chicago. So I'll go AUS, Austin, to Chicago. It's probably going to be about $100. It's Southwest. It's going to be a hundred bucks. Go to site. Scan through that. And and you guys might notice I'm bouncing back and forth between different sites. Like now I'm actually on the Southwest Airlines uh, site. Uh, the cheapest flight, yeah, around a hundred bucks, give or take. One hundred six dollars. I would likely take that morning flight to five twenty a.m. and I get a free bag. You know, um, so the more the likely flight will be this flight. 
so actually that and that worked out really well because I wanted to get back to Chicago for a day or two anyway. Um, so we cleared that out. That's good. All right, and uh, so like I said, you guys see I can go I go back and forth between different flights, uh, different flight sites, uh, Momondo, Skyscanner, and then the direct flight. Uh, do I have it up right here? I have got, um, and this is Google Flights. I know a lot of people love Google Flights, but I hate it. Like, I, I just think it's so slow and antiquated, and the pricing is just not that good. Um, it's, I, I just don't, I just don't understand why people are so obsessed with uh, Google Flights. Um, I really like this map, where you can just punch in a place and then, and, and date, and then it gives you all of these different little, like, options. Like, you can look at the map, and see where you can go. I can uh, I'm a real big fan of that. But other than that, not a big fan. So let's say hypothetically, um, I do New York, and this is also a thing with Google Flights. Um, and somebody who's watching this might know better than I do. Um, you can't do like a one-way ticket. I'm pretty confident there's a way. I just don't know how to do it. So you always have to enter a, a return date. So. Um, I'm not a yeah, huge fan of Google Flights for that reason. So let me go ahead and close this out because I'm not going to be using that. All right. So then I'll come back over here and I'll put in uh, what I found was about 300 to get from Austin to uh, London. All right. So this uh, now I get to show you guys a site that I am in love with. Okay. Um, and if you're not using this just for fun, you are missing out. It's called Rome to Rio. So Rome to Rio is a it's it's a site that started as an app, and you can put in basically one destination to anywhere in the world, and it'll tell you how to get there. So London, England to Dunstable, England, and these are my options. All right. So for example, say you want to go from let's say Waco, Texas, to I don't know uh, CBU. Romania. All right. It'll give you all your options. So let me switch this to. It should be your. All right, we're good. Uh, this will tell you all your options. See, you got a bus. You take a bus to. Oh, where do you take a bus? You go from Waco to West End, West End to Dallas, and then fly from Dallas to CBU. Oh, yeah. this is not actually. This is actually not as complicated as I thought it would be. So you guys get the point. So let's go to London. London, England to Dunstable, Dunstable, England. So I'm gonna go there for about three days to visit a friend and I got a train for around 16 and uh, 24, euro. let's see how many times a day, every 30 minutes. So I don't really have to worry. I can go straight to London, uh, St. Pancras and just go to the kiosk and buy it. So let me go ahead, I'll go down here and I'll round up and I'll go uh, say 25 on the high end, boom, that's done. So I have to be in Romania. Um, so you guys probably saw my uh, my video from Eastern Romania last year. So this year I'm gonna go uh, spend time with the family uh, for Christmas. So I have to be in Romania for Christmas. Um, and this is where my planning gets a little sketch. So I have absolutely no idea where I'm gonna be before that. So only the first week of December is spoken for. It's gonna be London and Dunstable. Outside of that, I have no idea where I'm gonna end up. But what I do wanna do is I wanna explore some uh, some winter markets and Christmas markets. So I'll, pro I'll be in likely one of three places. I'll be in Germany, I'll be in the Czech Republic, Prague, um, or I'll be uh, somewhere in Budapest. Uh, somewhere in that region. So I'll come in here and I'll say I'll be in Germany one way to Bucharest. And I know I'm flying directly to Bucharest and I'll go the whole month of December because I don't know when in December I want to go uh, into Romania. So I'll likely fly out of Berlin which is usually the cheapest route. And the cheapest is around here on the 13th, which is going to be way too long for me. Um, so there's no way I could be there one. I'm basically wasting these two weeks. So I say, I can't really do that, but this is probably my best option at 68. So let's see what the options are from Budapest. Not too bad. Uh, this $52 flight. 
that might be good. Or this uh, $36 uh, dollar flight on Christmas Eve. Uh, that might be a very good option, actually. Let me take a look at this one. Uh, show flights. And actually, guys, I might have just found my flight that quick. Because uh, that's a really good price, assuming that price is solid. It's not looking like it's going to hold up. Oh, we're at 44. We might, ah, we almost, not bad. 44 is still a really good price. So get there on Christmas Eve. That, that's not bad, guys. This might be it. I might just book this one. I might go ahead and book this one. Uh, be in Budapest. Yeah, that's good enough for me. Problem solved. So I'll get that. Let's round this up. Uh, with the bag, it's probably going to be closer to 60, 60 to 65, something like that. All right, so this is where um, it gets a little bit uh, more tricky, uh, trickier, trickier. I want to go to Berlin. I do. I want to go somewhere fun for New Year's Eve. Um, so I was thinking, I've, I've never been to Berlin on New Year's Eve. I've been before, right after, uh, but I want to go see, you know, what it's like uh, in Berlin. So I'll go progress to Berlin. And see if I can get there anytime soon. Nope. No chance. Alright. So, and and again, you guys are looking at it. Uh, can I get this flight? Yeah, I can afford that. It's a, it's a $100 flight. It's going to be 68 plus bag. It's going to be a $100 flight. I can afford it. But the issue that I'm going to run into is, do I want to spend, uh, where are we at? Uh, let me get over to, actually, I'm going to be done with my mortgage. I'm not even going to mess with it anymore. Um, Hostel World just kind of make things easier for y'all. Let's see. And then we come here. Um, I know Berlin's prices are going to be insane for that time frame. So let's come over here to Hostel World. And by the way, for those of you who have never followed me, this is HostelWorld.com. HostelWorld.com is the number one place to look for hostels anywhere in the world. They bought out their competition, which is Hostel Bookers, uh, all under the same company, Hostel World. So I recommend Hostel World. It has the best reviews by far. So I'd say I would want to fly out. Uh, let's see. I want to get there on the 30th. Uh, actually, let's say the 29th. And I want to leave on like the 2nd uh, of January. One guest, Berlin, Germany. I'm, I'm betting on around 30 to 35 euros. A night at least. Uh, my bad. Let's see. It keeps hitting me with the bot. Euro. Scroll, scroll, scroll. And yep, that's about yeah, about what I expected. A little, actually, a little bit higher than I thought, but that's about what I expected. So I have to factor in, and mind you, this is on the low end. This is something that people don't do a lot. Um, let's say, let's go to, um, I don't know, Grand House, though, all right? Scroll down. Let's see, load. Oh, and this is something that, look, New Year's 2017, 2018. So something, uh, a lot of hostels have these booking restrictions around holidays, New Year's, Christmas, uh, Easter, um, big events like uh, Hogmany, um, like they have these restrictions. Um, all books are, are non-refundable. The property will charge your credit card directly and immediately. Um, you can't put a reservation hold on it. Like most of the time, it's just pay when you show up. All right, so here, uh, let's go to the eight bed and then go to price breakdown. Always go view price breakdown. This will give you an idea. All right, so that's 47, 47 workers. And this is one of the rare hostels that do not do an upcharge on the weekends. But let me go to a place that I'm pretty confident does an upcharge. Uh, I think Wombats does, but I know St. Christopher's does. St. Christopher's here? Yes, St. Christopher's does. So these places do an upcharge on the weekends. Let's see, scroll down, view price breakdown. Oh, not bad. We're actually not doing it on a 16 bed. Oh, wow. They've okay. Good, good, good. They've uh, they've, they've averaged out the rates over this time period. Not bad. Okay. Well, I stand corrected. Uh, I stand corrected on that. Okay. So the I know I went off on a little bit of tangent on that one, 
But the reason that I brought it up was that I know on top of this prize and the hostel prize, it's going to be a lot of money. That's going to be, let's see, it's, about, it's going to be about a 350 to $400 trip just in transportation and accommodation alone. So $100 for a flight, um, let's say $200 for four days accommodation. So that's already $300 right there, not to mention getting around the city, okay? So with that in mind, I'll go, let's go everywhere. Let's see what options we have everywhere. From Bucharest, we can go to Italy, Belgium, Romania, Germany, and I'm looking around, I'm like, ah, does any of this really hit me? Do I look like, oh, well, Malta? Actually, I'm, I enjoy Malta. I've been wanting to go back to Malta. Let's see what Malta has. Not much, not much. So I'll go back. And I wish you could do it by week, but unfortunately, uh, very few places. I, I haven't seen a site that's very reliable. Uh, Cyprus, I'm like, well, I've never been to Cyprus. And that would be a new country, so if I can get a good flight. If I was leaving on the 15th, it would be a good flight. So you guys see my issue. Um, but what I could do, and I've been thinking about going back to Budapest and doing New Year's Eve in Budapest. Which isn't terrible. New Year's Eve, 52 bucks. And I already know the prices in Budapest. All right, so let's go uh, here, and I will go question mark, question mark, question mark, because I have a couple months uh, to be able to plan this one. So the next one, I'll go down to Cyprus, Luxembourg, Belarus, Albania. You guys already saw me take a kind of peek at Cyprus, um, and I'll look at Luxembourg, uh, Albania, and Belarus to see where they are, um, like to make sure, relative to where I'm going to be anyway. So I know Luxembourg is over here. All right, Albania is over here. Belarus is up here. All right. So I'll kind of keep an eye and say, okay, Belarus is, Belarus is by itself. Belarus is up here. Um, I have no intention of going to any of these countries on this trip. I might end up in Poland. I kind of tend to end up in Poland every time I go to Europe for some reason. But I have no intention to be anywhere near Belarus. So Belarus is highly unlikely. Um, Albania is far more likely because I will be in Italy. Um, I'll be in Romania. Uh, I have a good friend who lives in Kosovo that you guys already met, uh, Tony G, my friend that I went to Poland when I had that issue in Warsaw. Uh, he lives in Kosovo now, so um, he invited me to come to Kosovo, and then we'll take a trip over to Albania. That's a, a distinct possibility. So I will basically just need to find a flight uh, from anywhere in Europe to Kosovo, and then come over to Albania. Uh, so what I know is I can get to it from Italy, To Kosovo, and and this will be closer. This will be in January. Yeah. Let's see if we can get something better from Spain. And when you see this, just reverse engineer it. This is a technique that I've been wanting to show you guys everywhere. Okay, so usually when you reverse engineer, if, wherever you get cheap flights going, you can get them in return for the most part. So Germany to Kosovo is probably, I, unfortunately, I can't go to Turkey anymore because I'm American. Thank you, Donald Trump. So I'll come back here and I'll go Germany, Kosovo, Pristina, $82. And by the way, uh, I know a lot of people are probably going to comment and say, hey, Eric, why don't you just go to Serbia or Bosnia and go overland? I'm retired. I'm not doing that anymore. I just, I can't, or Bulgaria, I just cannot be, uh, to be part of no offense to the Balkans region, I am not a fan of this region of Europe. And I've been to every country in this region, uh, several of them a couple of times. Albania is the last one left. I, I do not enjoy my time here. I, I just don't. So me going overland, mm -mm, just not going to happen. 
So I'm looking for the quickest way in and quickest way out. Uh, hopefully someday that changes. I, I go and have a good experience. Uh, so likely Munich, which I've been wanting to go to anyway. And oh, let me step back. Let me step back. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, right here, uh, this is going to be something that you guys want to keep an eye on. This direct flights only. A lot of times it's default clicked. You guys see that? You see the change? So now Frankfurt's an option. For 180 to 93. So keep an eye on this. I know it happens to me all the time. I was like, I know there's cheaper flights in this destination. All right. So, but anyway, Munich. Oh, also, guys, uh, I, I know I'm rambling on. This is my first time doing, like, really one of these uh, long kind of follow me thingies. And so let me know how you like it in the comments. If you don't like it, I'm, if I'm babbling too much. If you want to see something else, I don't know. Um, yeah, so the, the price is pretty average, like 92, 92 bucks. I wonder who the airline is. Oh, Germania. Oh, I've never flown them. I don't know them. I have no idea who that airline is. But Air Pristina. Okay. I flew them once. I flew I flew Air Pristina once. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I've got that, and I'll uh, kind of keep an eye on them. So I, okay. So I could probably put off Albania, Luxembourg, or E. Like, Luxembourg is right here. Like, I could get there. I can walk there from Germany. It's, it's that close. And, you know, it's interesting because I've been all around Luxembourg every year for, like, the past six, seven years. Like, Mannheim and Brussels and Paris and Strasbourg. But I just never find the time to go to Luxembourg for some reason. Uh, but I'll definitely uh, try to get that knocked out uh, on this trip. So here is my countries list. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm very organized with this country counting thing. Um, these are all the countries I've already been to. And as you guys can see... Luxembourg, open. Right. So Luxembourg, Cyprus, Belarus, Albania. Still have to be checked off. All right. So that's that. Now, when it comes to sellable content, uh, oh, excuse me, excuse me, let me step back. Endura Ski Trip. That is a project that I'm kind of in negotiations and talks with trying to put together. Um, you guys might have remembered the trip that I took to Endura. Unfortunately, it was in off season, uh, like the shoulder season. So there was no skiing, really no hiking. Um, there was just the spa and shopping. Uh, so I didn't really have a chance to kind of really get into Endora. So what I want to do is I actually want to do a ski trip this time uh, to go, you know, skiing. Uh, so that's a negotiation, but that is a very easy trip. Endora is north of Barcelona. I usually say, uh, people say, like, north, uh, north of Spain, Eric. Like, eh, it's really north of Barcelona. All right. right there. You guys see how tiny it is? It's right there. It's literally the size of like a city. Like it's right here. That's indoor. All right. Barcelona, three hours. Phew. So I'll just drive from Barcelona to indoor. All right. All right. So right here, when I get to sellable content, um, get into Paris is easy. It's absolutely easy. So I'll likely end up back in Paris exploring that a little bit. Um, Southern uh, European uh, ski breaks. So basically, a ski break is a place you go to get away from. Uh, the cold, the snow, so basically uh, the Brits, the Germans, Scandinavians, Polish, they'll come south to places like Granada, Seville, to go down to Lisbon, uh, go down to Malta, um, Morocco. So this entire region where the weather is a lot more mild and you actually get some nice days, Greece as well. Uh, it used to be Turkey, but well, Turkey for you is still open for Europeans. I'll come over here, uh, Northern Africa destinations, Cordoba, easy right here. And I am considering uh, going to check off a couple more African nations. So uh, Tunisia, um, Algeria, but I do need to uh, get a visa and I actually have to, will have to send off my passport. I'm not sure if I have time, but Tunisia is a visa on arrival. So uh, I wanted to check this out and I actually haven't looked at this at all yet. So Tunisia. And let's say the whole month of January. I have not looked at this at all yet. Out of Italy. And that's, that makes total sense. Uh, Italy, Malta, France, Italy. It's right there. 
it, it makes total sense. It's literally right here. Alright. So I might be able to go back to Malta and hop over to Tunis. So let me take a look at Malta, which is by far the most likely scenario because I, I really don't feel like I, I dug into Malta as much as I needed to um, because of reasons. Let's see, Tunis, Carthage, and I could probably just do a round trip flight. Yeah, perfect, perfect. I'm going to Tunisia likely. I'll probably put that on the books. I'll come here, add it to the list. Eighty. One way. And notice I put everything in one way just to kind of figure out what's going on. So um, also here I have assignment locations. These are assignments that have been pitched to me. Um, I can't go into details about the assignment yet, but there's uh, there are assignments in uh, Dublin, Portugal, Germany, Austria, Czech Republic, uh, England, specifically Manchester, France, uh, Spain, uh, Madrid. And basically, uh, I can go to any of these places and produce content for uh, these outlets that would like them and uh, get paid, uh, pretty much, as long as I do a good job, of course. Um, and these are very easy places. And every year I get pitched, I'd say every month I get pitched several different assignments in the same places year round. Um, always Ireland, Germany's a pretty big one, Spain, France, uh, the UK, um, Prague specifically is a great place, and Portugal has been coming up a lot lately, um, but I'm not really confident, I'm not really sure about Portugal. Um, so yeah, um, really, that's, that's all I really wanted to show you guys as far as flights and how I plan my trips. Um, as you guys see, it's very random. I don't plan a lot. Like, it is uh, October now, and this trip isn't until beginning of December and in November. So, th this is all could change. It's all up in the air, and that's what I really enjoy and what I love about it. Um, oh, uh, one thing. I wanted to show you guys one more thing um, as far as uh, hotels. Uh, so, when I'm booking a hotel, I use, I use Hotels.com exclusively. Um, for a couple reasons. Uh, this right here, uh, 10 nights, uh, and you get one free, the average uh, of those 10 nights, you get that tour. So if the average is $65, you'll get a $65 credit towards your next room. Um, but what I always like to do is I'll go to some place, let's say Berlin. Berlin, um, because I don't stay in hostels all the time. I usually do two to three days in an Airbnb or a, uh, in an Airbnb or a hotel. And I'll go here and look at three days in Berlin. Let's see what's going on. And then I'll lower the price. I really want to spend more than 125 a night. Alright, and then I'll look, I'm looking at four or fives. And that's going to significantly lower. And Courtyard is 98, 89. Leonardo Hotel. I'm a fan of Leonardo's. Uh, two Hotel. Oh, guys, this is one of my, this is actually a gay hotel. Uh, two Hotel Berlin and Axel Hotel. These are our franchise. And if you guys, again, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know my last trip to Berlin, I stayed here. I stayed at these two hotels in Berlin. So I'm actually a big fan. And then I'm probably going to stay here again. Because it is an excellent location. <clears throat> but something I wanted to show you. You come here and you go to book now. Um, I don't know. I'll pick this one. Uh, pay now. And if you pay now, you obviously get a discount. But look here. This little guy came up. Apply coupons. And look here what's happening. Keep an eye right here what's happening to the price. right here. You see that? So instead of 188, 171. So this is an app called Honey. Right here and it's on the Chrome browser. So what Honey does is it looks it it has a database of these codes. These codes and they put all the codes in and gets you the best price possible. And the only site that this has worked religiously well on is hotels.com because hotels.com 
always has five, 10, 15 different promotions going at the same time. So, all right. Um, and I, I, obviously, I do the same thing with Airbnb, guys. I do the exact same thing with Airbnb. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you on this video. Um, and I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you uh, want to see something specifically about how I book hotels or trains or anything like that. Um, and as usual, lead the world better than you found it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.